and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat, in which we will work an example that deals with rate of returns, computing the arithmetic rate of return, geometric, as well as the dollar weighted average. Every time I say the word example, it means I already explained this topic in a prior session much, much more in depth. So if you want to look at the detailed explanation, please do so bef before looking at this example. This topic is covered on the CPA as well as the CFA exam, Essentials or Principles of Investments. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,700 plus accounting, auditing, tax, finance, as well as Excel tutorial. If you like my lectures, please like them, share them, put them in playlists. If they benefit you, it means they might benefit other people. Connect with me on Instagram. On my website, farhatlectures.com, you will find additional resources to supplement this course as well as, 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 well as your accounting and finance courses. Check out my website. So to illustrate those concepts, arithmetic, time-weighted, and the dollar value, dollar weighted average, we're going to be looking at this example. A funds began with a $10 million and reports the following monthly results with negative figures in parentheses. So we started with 10 million, we invested in the fund 10 million, and this is what happened. The first month we earned 2% and the investors put in $300,000. The second month we earned 8% and we added half a million dollar. In the third month, we had a, a re negative return of negative 4% and the investors did not put any money. The question becomes compute the arithmetic time series and the dollar weighted average. Let's do real quick the arithmetic because it's the, sim the simplest one, two plus eight minus four divided by three. Two plus eight, 10 minus four, six, six divided by three equal to two percent. Simply put, we just computed the arithmetic and it's we earned two percent. Now, let's compute the time series or the geometric. Time series is the same thing as geometric. How do we compute this? It's one plus point two times one plus point eight times 1 minus 0.4, which is technically 0.6. We raised all of this 1 to the third power because we had three periods. We subtract 1 and we get to the answer. And the answer should be less than 2%. If the answer is more than 2%, then we have an issue. You did something wrong because the time series or geometric should be lower than the arithmetic. Now, let's go to the Excel sheet to compute because... I prefer that you do it in an Excel sheet, the geometric, then we would look at the dollar weighted average. So this is the data that we are giving. Let's first commute the, ar the arithmetic, just use an Excel sheet. That, so this way I want you to also make sure you are comfortable with the Excel sheet. Basically you would pull the average, the average function, you highlight the numbers and it's going to give you 2%. Now let's compute the geometric. Again, the same thing, you put all the all the returns, the 2%, the four, the 8%, and the 4%. Then you pull the geomet, the geo mean, the geo mean formula. And basically, you will take geo mean equal geo mean. And let me just do, pull the formula in front of you. And basically, you will go to the geo mean. You highlight the numbers and you add 1 plus 1, only n17, not n18. Then what you do is you take this number minus 1 and oops. You'll take the answer, minus 1, and let's see what the answer is. It should be less than 2%. It's 1.88. Again, in the prior session, I explained to you what does 1.88 means. So this is the geometric mean. So this is the geometric mean. This is the arithmetic mean. And again, this is 2%. 1.88 is less. It means if you invested your money somewhere else, you would end up overall with 1.88% in three months versus this fund. So we did the arithmetic, we did, we did the geometric. Now we need to do the dollar weighted average. So to do the dollar weighted average, we need this data again. So here's the data. We started the beginning of the month. We had, we invested with 10 million. Then this 10 million made a return of 2%. Okay, what does that mean? It means I made $200,000, which is 10 million, 10 times 0.02, then the investor brought in $300,000. So let me add the $300,000. So what did I end up with? I end up with um, 
sorry, they, they, they brought in 3 million, not 300,000. I made 200,000, they bought 3 million. I end up with 13 million, 200,000 the first month. The second month, I started the second month with 13.2, which is the, the ending of the first month be, becomes the beginning of the second month. The rate of return is 8%, so I'm gonna take 13.2 times 8%, and that's gonna give me a growth a return of 1 million point one one million and fifty six thousand then the investors brought in five million that's pretty good the investor brought in five million so I end up the the second month with nineteen million point two five six nineteen million two hundred and fifty six thousand now I'm gonna start the third month the third month is basically what I whoops what I end up the second month which is which is the 19.25 million. Um, I lost 40% of this. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to, I lost 40%. So I'm going to take this multiplied by 0.4. So I lost 770,000. And the investors did not bring in any money. Did not bring in any money. Okay. They panicked. They did not bring in any money. Therefore, I end up with 18 million. 18 million four hundred uh, four hundred and eighty thousand this is this is what I end up with this is what I started with with 10 million okay so basically I I this is my growth this is what I earned and I lost and this is what the investors put in so I end up with 18 million now once I have this information I'm ready to compute my IRR because remember I have to turn this into a problem so how do I compute my IRR I just turn it into a capital budgeting problem at period zero, this is the period, period zero, I invested $10 million. In period one, in period one, I invested, at the end of period one, I invested another $3 million. Again, when I invest, it's negative. So this is the $3 million. Period two, the investors brought in, or I invested, $5 million. In period three, at the end of period three, nobody brought anything, therefore it's zero therefore it's zero but i cashed out i cashed out it means i walked away with 18.4 million so this is positive okay so year three is positive now i'm ready to compute my irr so basically what i would do i would go to my function since it's finance let me just bring down the finance let's go to my irr compute my irr the values let me just compute the values right here here are the values Let's go to IRR, internal rate of return, and the values, these are my values, and click on OK. I'm going to show you the formula. So on a weighted average, a dollar weighted average, I earned 1.17. It's even lower, lower than the arithmetic and lower than the... Uh, than the geometric because remember the arithmetic was two percent the geometric was 1.88 the arithmetic is lower why because although i made although i made two percent and in one year eight percent but when i suffered the 40 percent i had almost 20 million a lot of money invested and i suffered a lot all at once okay so that's why it's not my 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 dollar weighted return is not as good as it's 1.17 once again as i mentioned in the prior recording mutual fund they quote the geometric mean geometric uh, geometric mean geometric mean over the three over the period why because the geometric mean don't take into account the dollar amount because the mutual fund manager cannot control whether the whether whether the investors take money out they have no control over that all that they have control of is how well they invest the money as always i'm going to ask you to like this recording and share it and in the next session what i would do i'm going to look at apr versus ear annual percentage rate versus the effective annual rate which is the convention for annualizing rate as always also i'm going to invite you to visit my website for hatlectures.com for additional recording for additional recording and more practices if you are looking to increase your knowledge improve your performance good luck stud study hard and stay safe